I've been working on this mallet for a long time. Uh, I saw a video on YouTube and I really liked the style of it and I wanted to try to make one for myself. So I drew up designs for it and never really have gotten to it, but I think today is when I'm really gonna do some of the finishing touches. I cut out the top and bottom piece here. What I did was I had a piece of three quarter inch walnut. I cut the profile out with the bandsaw and then I cut it in half. If you had like half inch walnut, you could just do two halves. That might work better so there's no rough side. But this is really exciting. I'm liking how this is looking. What I'm gonna do is glue them together just like this, all these pieces, without the handle in there. And then whenever I glue this together and then it's all dry and cured, I'll take the handle, put it back in there, and then with a rasp or the spindle sander, start to curve everything down to the shape of the handle so it kind of will go into the shape of a circle. I'll start to lay the glue down here. I'll take off the handle and start smearing this around. And now the other side. Now I'll put the handle in place. We're not gluing the handle in. I just need to know where to put these pieces here. So now I'm gonna take this one, put there, this one here. Now we're just gonna move these around. I want it to just be a perfect fit. These gaps right here are mortise, it's a mortise and tenon joint. That's how the head is being held on the hammer. I'm going to drill or cut a slot right here, one right here, and then tap two wedges in, and that'll split the wood and hold the head on. Now we can go ahead and clamp these pieces. You can see the angles here and here are both the same. I'm ready to let this set. I'm gonna put a finish on the handle. Right now I think I just have a mineral oil finish on it. I really want a harder finish that really fills in the little grain gaps and small tear outs that's on the oak. So I'm gonna use a CA finish. It looks great on pens. I can't imagine it looking any less on this one. I just cleaned off the oxidation with some 600 grit just to get a fresh finish on the wood for the CA glue. Now that the glue is dry, we're gonna go ahead and flatten it and bolt it. Looks like I sanded it a little bit too much. You really have to be careful when you're sanding with that 400 grit. It takes a lot of material off. You can see right here, that's wood, raw wood. Um, <clears throat> it's film, It did make it much smoother, even right now. It's much smoother than what it was before. If I wanted, I could go into another coat here, add more layers on, because it really absorbed a lot in. But I think I'm just going to leave it like this. Whenever I put the head of the mallet on, I'm gonna rasp everything down, and I'm definitely gonna scratch some of the finish off that I have on here right now. And I'm gonna rub another finish over the whole thing. So I think this really helped a lot to fill in some of the pits and tear outs. It's much smoother than it was. The buffing really just brings out the shine in the wood. It adds so much of a glisten to it, and this is super smooth now. Yeah, that's, that's, I love the CA finish whenever it gets really smooth, and it really fills in a lot of those pits and makes the surface of the wood smooth. Now I'm ready to glue this other piece on right here. I got it so the handle fits right in there, very snugly. There's a tiny bit of wobble. Of course, there's wobble this way, there's supposed to be, but back and forth. It barely twists at all. That's just, that's exactly how I want it. it it's almost perfect. This is basically all flat right here. There's a little bit of a gap, which you want, you want a little bit of slack. You don't want it to be too tight on this. Now I'm gonna go ahead and glue this on. Now I'm gonna smear the glue around, make sure it's on all the surfaces. Now I'm ready to glue this piece on top. 
This is probably gonna be one of the harder parts. First of all, because the glue likes to slide, even with the clamps. It's kind of an awkward way that we're clamping it. But also, I don't want there to be a buildup of glue drips in there. I don't think it'll be a very big problem if there is. I'll be able to just take a scraper and start to scrape in there, but I'll have to try to avoid that as much as I can. All right, it's been 24 hours. I can go ahead and remove these clamps that I have on here. I'm pretty excited to see the fit onto the handle. I cleaned out a little bit of the squeeze out that was in there, and we can go ahead and test fit this handle. That's perfect. It doesn't wobble back and forth this way almost at all. There's a tiny bit of slop, but that's actually not gonna, that'll basically go away totally whenever we put those wedges in. Now we'll clean this up on the spindle sander. With all the edges cleaned up, this looks really nice, especially whenever I go ahead and put the handle in, <laughs> except upside down. That fits in there just right. The gaps here, whenever I press it flat, are even. And if you look at it like this, everything, the lines here are parallel, which means I got this surface flat. I'm gonna cut both of these slits 5 sixteenths. I'm not gonna make a cut all the way down here. I'm actually gonna go three quarters of an inch up. I drilled some relief holes down at the bottom here that'll help it split right there. We don't want it to continue splitting down the wood so that'll kind of keep it from doing that. And then I'm starting to carefully drill um, or cut a slot down to that hole following the line. Just gotta take your time here. I'm ready to go ahead and pound in the wedges. I got the slots cut all the way down. One thing I would do differently is probably get a little bit of a longer blade. One's not so thin, it's really easy for it to wobble back and forth. I got the lines as straight as I could and that'll do just fine. Goes inside of the mallet head, just perfect. Now I'll take some glue and we'll just put a little bit of glue on the wedges. We really don't need much, but it'll just sort of keep them in place. Now we'll go ahead and start putting the wedges in place. It's a lot easier if I put one on where it's just in that one corner, and then I'll put the other one on in the other corner. It helps you get them in place at first. Now the little hammer here. I'm going to Lightly and controlled, start tapping in these wedges. All right, that's it. Now we let this dry. I pounded this one in more than this one. Looking back, I shouldn't have done that. Now the wedges are gonna be different. I was trying to compensate for a slight misalignment, and I think I should have just kept pounding them in even. Now we can go ahead and trim off the wedges. Now we'll take that and sand it flat. Now I've got that flat. You can see I would definitely do this differently next time. Now I'm going to start shaping the actual head of the mallet to the shape of the handle. Now I'm just pulling that shape into the handle and I'm really liking how this is looking. I think the carved look really adds a lot to the mallet. All right, I got it all ground down to the final shape. I have it all sanded to a 600 grit finish and it's looking very cool. I'm extremely happy with how this turned out. Uh, it's super cool having the handle just transition into the curves here. I really like the design. For this project, I'm going to use Danish oil as my finish. All right, now start wiping it on. This is always the most fun part of a project, is watching the finish go on the project.
This, uh, the walnut really looks nice on the sides there, the wide open grain. So here's the completed project. This is a very nice mallet. I'm very happy with the feel, the weight of the head, and I really learned a lot in this project. I got the idea from uh, the Third Coast Craftsman. He designed this hammer and I kind of went off of his video and this turned out great. I had a really fun time making this and I would encourage you guys to try to make something similar.